Hi everybody, this is Jeff from Pixelscholar.com and today we're going to talk about creating an orbit for an animated camera. So what you see here is a rig, uh, an animation rig that I created for a character recently. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to create a camera that orbits this this rig so that if I wanted to I could render that out as an animation so that you can see the rig from all sides. So to do that what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here into my top viewport I'm going to zoom out and the very first thing I have to do is create that camera so I'm going to go ahead and create a target camera. So I'm going to come over here to my create panel over here to the cameras button and I'm going to go ahead and click on target now, to create a target camera, I'm going to click and drag in the top viewport. That's going to first create my camera, and then when I let go of the mouse, that's going to actually create my target. So I'm going to go ahead and maximize my perspective view here so you can see the camera here in the scene. And the first thing that I want to do is, now that I'm done creating the camera, I'm going to come over here and click on the Modify panel. So now this fixes my camera in the scene, and the first thing I want to do is I want to center the target. So I'm going to go ahead and select the target. I'm going to come up here and click on Select and Move. And as you can see now, I can come in and grab that target and position it wherever I want. Well, for my rig, my rig is centered in world space. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to want to center that target as well. I might not always want to have it pointing directly at, at the ground plane, but I can modify that later. So I'm going to go ahead and hit F12 on my keyboard to bring up my Move Transform type in. And I'm just going to right click on my X and Y values. Z is already at zero, so it's not necessary to do that again. And now, as you can see, my target is sitting right here in between the feet. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and center my camera along that X and Y axis. So once again, with it selected, I'm going to hit F12. I'm going to right click on X and Y. And maybe clicking, maybe right clicking on Y wasn't such a great idea. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Control Z. There we go. So centering that along the X axis, which runs that way, works a lot better. But along Y, that's going to bring it right back so that it's centered just like the target and that's not what we want. So I'm going to go ahead and close that for now. So let's go ahead and back out to my four point my, or my my four window view here. I'm going to hit the G key in my top view to hide my grid for now because the next thing that I want to do is I want to create an actual path that that camera will follow. So I'm going to go ahead and come back to my create panel and this time, instead of going to cameras, I'm going to come over here to shapes, and I'm going to create a circle. Now, it doesn't matter where I actually create this circle. I'm just going to go ahead and left-click and drag, and this is going to create a circular spline in my scene. Now I can come over here to the modify panel, and if I want to, I could actually convert this guy into an editable spline object if I wanted to, if I wanted to come in and modify the path and make it anything more complex than just a circle. But for now, we're going to keep it simple and just let this be a circular path. But right now, as far as 3D Studio Max is concerned, it's still just a spline object. And I can come in here and control the size of it by adjusting the radius. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the radius so that it's intersecting the camera at about the midpoint Go ahead and blow that up so you can see that a little bit better. So that this is going to function as the path for my camera. But before I do anything else, I'd better make sure that my camera can actually see my entire character. So I'm going to come down here to my perspective view, and I'm going to change that by clicking on the word perspective here, going to cameras, and making sure you can see that I have multiple cameras in my scene. So this camera that I've created now is actually camera 004. So I'm going to come in here and make sure that I'm set to view camera 004. 
Now, as you can see, I cannot see my entire character here, so I'm going to come over here into my side view. I'm going to start by moving my camera up and also adjusting the lens so we get a wider angle lens. And it might also be necessary to move that camera back and up a little bit higher because we're trying to get the character as close to center in our scene as we can. So it's going to take a little bit of manipulation. Now the other thing that might be necessary is I might need to actually move my target up as well. But it's going to be complicated to select my target when it's in here amongst all these bones and helper objects. So to make my life easier, what I'm going to do is up here under my filter for selections, my selection filter, I'm going to set this so that I can only select cameras. Now if I come in here and click, I don't have to worry about accidentally grabbing something that's associated with that rig. So I'm going to go ahead and left click and drag. Pull that target up along the Z axis. Which now gives me the freedom to come in here and lower the angle of my camera a little bit. So that we don't have such an extreme bird's eye view of the character. Now with that positioned, what I'm going to do is come in here and rescale my spline, but notice I can't select it now. That's because I need to come back into my selection filters and set that back to all. Now I can go in, grab my spline, and I'm actually going to move it up to try to match the approximate height of the camera. And in my top view, I'm going to come in and increase the radius again just so that it can about match the halfway point of that camera. Now, we have our spline object, which is going to function as our path, and we have the camera. The next step is to actually animate it, and that's what we're going to discuss in part two. Okay, so continuing on from where we were in the last video, I'm going to go ahead and select my camera, and now I'm going to come over here to the motion panel. It's this little guy right here. And inside the motion panel, there's a little menu. It's very easy to miss right here. It says Assign Controller. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And these are the controllers that are assigned to my camera right now. You can see that position is controlled by a position XYZ controller. The roll angle is controlled by a Bezier float. And the scale is controlled by a Bezier scale. Now, we'll probably talk about all these controllers at some point in a future video. Uh, but for now, we're going to keep it simple. What we want to do is we want to replace the standard position XYZ controller. And if I go ahead and I click the little plus sign next to this, you can see that position X, position Y, and position Z are broken out into their own little category or entry right here. This is the standard position controller that you employ when you animate using uh, keyframes. But what we want to do is we don't want to rely on the physical position of the camera. We want to rely on that spline path. So what I'm going to do is come up here and select the actual position XYZ controller. Okay, in fact, we're going to close this, hit the little minus sign. And there's a little button right above this that if you mouse over it, you'll get a little pop-out that says Assign Controller. I'm going to go ahead and click on that, and you'll see that I'm presented with a list of different controllers that I can replace that position XYZ with. In our case, what we want to use is a path constraint. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK once I've highlighted that. Now, the camera still isn't assigned to that path yet, so what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down here while we have path constraint open, and below this we have all of the options available to us when we're using this controller. Under path parameters right here, go ahead and click on the add path button, and then we're going to mouse out here in the top viewport until we are over that circular spline. And I'm going to go ahead and click on that spline. Now you can see that a couple of things happen, but before we explore that, let's come back over here and notice that the camera is now attached to that circle at a weight of 50%. And we'll go into waiting uh, a little bit more in a future video, but for now we can leave it at 50. That should be fine. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off Add Path. And now you can see that the camera has jumped over here to this uh, 
sort of a, did a 90 degree rotation on us. And without getting too technical on you in this short little video, uh, essentially what happened was this spline is made up of four different vertices. And if I come back over here to the modify panel, uh, we didn't bother to convert this guy into an editable spline object, but if we had, you would see that it's made up of four vertices. When you create a spline, those vertices are numbered, so you're always going to have uh, vertex number one, number two, number three, number four. Uh, when you assign an object to follow a path, it's automatically going to jump to that first vertex. So in this case, the first vertex is here on the side of our character. To fix that for now, and there's a couple of different ways we could fix it, but to keep it simple, what we're going to do is we're going to come up here to select and rotate. We're going to make sure that angle snap is turned on, and I'm going to come in here in my top view, and I'm going to rotate 90 degrees until my camera is back here facing the front of my character. Now I'm going to go ahead and deselect everything, and I want you to come down here and drag the playback head on your time slider, and you'll notice that the camera does a complete orbit around the character now, because it has been weighted to follow that path. And when you assign the camera to the path, what automatically happens is that however long your timeline is, it creates the, the animation in a percent along path fashion so that whatever the last frame is in the animation, in this case frame 100, the camera will be at 100% along that path and in frame 0 it will be at 0 along that path. Since the path is circular the camera starts and ends in the same position. So I'm going to go ahead and hit playback and you can see that the camera just infinitely loops around my character. Okay, So that's it in a nutshell. In a future video what we'll do is we'll go more in depth and talk about how we can actually modify the length and the speed of that orbit. It's pretty straightforward. If you select the camera and you come back over here to the motion panel, you'll notice that there's this little option down here that says percent along path. And when you're on frame zero, it's at zero. But if we come in here and we scrub along, you'll notice when I get to frame 50, we are at 50% along the path. And when we get to frame 100, we actually have a keyframe that exists here. And you can tell because you've got the little red box around your um, spinner arrows that shows that we are now at 100% along the path. If we wanted to, we could modify the position of this keyframe on the time slider, or we could go in and we could add additional keyframes along the time frame here to control, to speed up, to slow down, to pause the rotation. But for now, hopefully that's enough to get you started. Thanks, and I'll see you soon.